Welcome to the Social Media for Real Estate Agents podcast, where we find rock stars in social media and we get them to show us realtors how we can use social media to increase our business. I'm Colin Nathan Aleem, licensed real estate agent in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And today, my guest is Javier Singh. Now, why are we talking to Javier? Okay. We're talking to him because number one, he's the number one realtor in social media in Jersey City. Number five in New Jersey, and he was just ranked uh, number 95 on Property Sparks top yeah. realtors Instagram list. So on Instagram, he has over 6,000 followers. We're going to learn about all of his secrets and kind of pull the curtain back on his real estate business. Welcome to the podcast, Javier. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, I appreciate you reaching out and uh, I'm looking forward to chatting with everyone and kind of sharing some secrets. <laughs> appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. So Harvey, let's start. I always want to start with people's backgrounds to see how they got to real estate. I know you have an interesting background because you come from the accounting CPA world. So again, how did you get to real estate? It was a journey, man. I actually went to college for accounting, as you mentioned. Did a five-year program. I, I got into Ernst and Young, one of the biggest, uh, you know, accounting firms in the world. I was, it was like kind of like, oh, I made it, right? Uh, I went in there, realized real quick that I absolutely hated accounting. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I'm good with numbers. Uh, this has got to be the the right job for me, right? And I went in there, and then I was, you know, getting my CPA license, and it, it was really funny. It was like, it, it became like a personal vendetta to actually get my CPA license. And, uh, you know, once I got it, it was like, I actually gave my, like, you know, I was like, I'm done with accounting. Like the day after I got my license, I was just like, all right, well, now I got the license. I proved to myself that I could do it. See you later, accounting. I actually then jumped into the startup world. So I was, you know, working on a number of startups where I was like the CFO of one. I managed the research department of another. I was on the board of directors of another one. You know, each of my prior career paths have kind of helped me learn something really important that has helped me today. For accounting, the numbers, the dil diligence, I was working crazy hours. I was like 9 to like 9 a.m. to like the a.m.s. And sometimes there was like a two-month period with no days off, right? Wow. Uh, including weekends. It was, it was rough. And then in the startup world, I kind of learned about just running a business from ground up, right? So like the J-curve is sometimes something that people in the startup world talk about where you're, you're spending money in the beginning and then eventually your profits come and shoot up. So you know, you've got to set yourself up from the beginning. So this really helped in the real estate world because a lot of realtors, they don't know how to budget. They don't know, you know, how to run a business. They just kind of jump in there and some of us become successful, luckily, and some of us don't. But there's a formula to become a successful real estate agent. And, and luckily, I was able to tap into that because of my prior experience. So I, uh, you know, became a realtor primarily as an investment decision. It was more like, all right, you know, I'm kind of moving some properties for myself. So let's increase the profit margin. I'll become a realtor and I'll just do my own deals. But it turned out that my personality really fit the world that we're in. And I absolutely love doing it. And people would reach out to me They're like, hey, you're a realtor. Like, can you help me? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, and then all of a sudden it just like became something else that, that I didn't expect it to. And honestly, I wake up every morning really, really happy that I'm a realtor and I found a career that makes me wake up every morning and get me excited to work. Great, man. Can I give you my accounting story real quick? Yeah, <laughs> when I was in high school, I took like AP accounting. So oh, God. going to college, I just knew that I was the man. So I'm like, yes, I'm going <laughs> to be an accountant. <laughs> I just knew I was going to be an accountant. Yeah. The first week, it was everything that I took in high school. So it was debit, Credit mm -hmm. and what's the other one? Is debit credit? What's the basic? Is debit credits and is something else? I forgot um, what it is. Yeah, there's a lot. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is debit credits and whatever the third thing is. And the yeah. first week, I knew everything. I was raising my hand, debits, credits. And then, and my friends always tease me about it now. I was, I was really enthused, had a lot of motivation. Then the second week, this was managerial accounting. The second week, I knew nothing. Yeah. And the teacher kept calling on me. I was like, I don't know. And then after that, my career was done. And I'm just <laughs> like, uh, this, is, this is not for me. I, oh, uh, I moved from accounting true. to finance. Yeah. No, the so, same thing happened to me. I, 
I actually retook the class that I took in high school because I was like, that was not at all what they expected me to know. Right, right. So it was like, wow. I was like, no, this is, it was too, like, like you said, it was numbers after numbers and it was definitely too boring for me. I'm more of a big picture guy versus getting kind of stuck in the weeds. Okay, so if I understood you right, you're doing accounting, left that, some startups. And actually, I got into real estate the same way where I said, okay, well, because I was in corporate America and I was like, well, if I'm going to be investing, I might as well get my real estate license. And I got my real estate license and like you, I'm like, hey, I like this. Let's keep going with this. So I guess what year did you kind of go full time and say, okay, I'm going to do this mainly? It was 2017. And the way I do things The second that I decide to do something, it's all or nothing for a certain period of time, right? There is no plan B. I I will lock myself in and be like, you are going to be successful in this. You have no other choice. Mm -hmm. So 2017, it was in the beginning of it, like the first few months, it was just like business, right? It was just like the business decision that I was talking about. And then I was like, you know, I kind of like this field. And I was like, all right, I'm locking myself in and I'm going full force. In my company, I was like runner up for the uh, rookie of the year award. It was like, you know, when I go in, you, you got to go in strong and, and that's in anything, right? You got to go in and with no plan. B. Then three, four years down the line, I got my broker's license and I actually went to my brokerage and I was like, look, like Jersey City is the second largest city in New Jersey. Why don't we have an office there and why am I not running? <laughs> like straight up, no. like went right to them. I was just like, this is what I want. Let's do it. And, and you will probably... Never regret it. I, I literally said to him, I was like, this would be the best decision you ever made is opening this office. And so, you know, I did a presentation. They believed in me and, you know, we did it. And, you know, within five months, we actually had an office open in Jersey City. Uh, I've been managing it and things are going really well. Wow, man, that's great to hear, man. Now, as far as social media, did you have success starting off? Is that something that has come of late? But tell us about your journey with social media. We all know technology is incredibly important. So, you know, I've always been on all the social media platforms and I, every time a new one comes out, I try to, you know, learn it real quick and try to master it in any way that I can. So I was always really on social media. I always felt like Instagram was kind of my platform and it really took off during the pandemic because, you know, a lot of us realtors, we got hit hard. There was a lot of fear in the industry. Like what's going to happen? Are we coming into like the dark ages of real estate? Nobody knew, right? The stock market was crashing. Nobody could go out and show houses. There was like a good six week period where like, I just did nothing. I was like, look, you could either sit here and do nothing and just enjoy time off, or you could do something really productive. And and I was like, all right, I need to find a way to get my name out there so that once we're out of this, people come to me, right? So I put a lot of focus on creating content that I thought was funny and, and I enjoy it. I'm just like, I enjoy comedy, right? And just in my natural life. So I, I kind of started doing these little silly skits and little videos. And it kind of took off. I guess everyone was sitting at home on their computers and their Instagram, their Facebook anyways. So that's what worked out. And I, it really did pay off in the long run. You know, obviously I'm getting some of these awards that you had mentioned, but you know, it, it's not only that it actually translated into business. I think last year about 36% of my business was directly from Instagram and, and other social media mm-hmm. platforms. Wow, that's phenomenal, man. Because I know a lot of people struggle with conversion. Um, They may get a lot of exposure, but their conversion might be lacking. How have you found it as far as how do you convert people from exposure being in your DMs to actually being signed contract? I think the main point of social media for realtors is so that people get to know your personality. Right. They're, they're about to make a really big financial decision. Oftentimes the biggest financial decision of their lives. Right. They want to know who you are. So one thing that I see a lot of realtors do is they don't even put their face up. They're scared to show their face. They put up properties of their listings, this and that. To be honest, nobody cares. Right. Like nobody cares. Like the people that are following you on your Instagram are not following you because six park lane or whatever. You know what I mean? They're, they're following you because of you. And so. The biggest thing is to show yourself, your personality, and and people will like you for being you, right? Just be yourself and and just get yourself out there. So that was the number one thing is like, I've heard a lot of times and people are just like, oh, I feel like I already know you the first time I meet them, right? It's just kind of like, 
that's kind of what you want to aim for is that like when you're meeting people, they, they feel like they already know you. And then it really takes the edge off of things because now you already broke the ice without doing it. So that alone will help convert things because people are going to come in when they get into your DMs, you're going to you know say, Hey, let's set up a call. I want to help you. Let's go over the process, right? People want their hands held. Uh, and, and so as long as you're open, friendly and educating, that's what's really, really important. And, and you have to go into this not as, oh, I'm going to get a deal. It's more like, how can I help this person? Right? Like, how can I give them an experience that they've not had before, right? With other realtors or maybe just go above and beyond their expectations. It's really important that your main goal is not money. It's help. And, and that's the way I, I do my business. So when you, you say that 36% of your business has come from social media, are you putting, I want to ask this like this, are you putting more money into social media or is it just kind of right now still point and shoot? Point and shoot. I, I don't put any money into my social media. To me, it's all been sweat equity. You know, look, that the 36% is not in, including some other business that I think could be attributed to social media because as far as marketing, I'm big on guerrilla marketing. I'm big on, you know, just marketing in general, social media marketing. I think you got to hit everyone from different angles, right? So I pay for like certain small billboards in my area. I, I do some, you know, guerrilla marketing, which maybe we can touch upon later. I then have, you know, my social media. I utilize the hashtags for my city and my target market. So if you're being hit from every corner, these guys are going to notice you. They're going to see you, right? It's, you cannot only do social media. You cannot only do billboards. You cannot only do postcards. You got to do a little bit of everything. And I think that that 30, 36% I could clearly mark came from like social media. But then there's another other factor where social media played a role where it might have been people that I wasn't in touch with for a long time. And then all of a sudden they just, we were following each other and that's, I think that is also in a way attributable to social media because you might not have, you know, reached out to those people. Right. And I always say this on every podcast. I think like social media, not social media, uh, Instagram is my weakest platform. Um, okay. I don't feel like I get a lot of traction on it. I guess what's been your experience as far as getting people to come to your page, actually getting people to follow you. I know you mentioned earlier that you do, you do skits. Yeah. Are you mixing education in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what about longer form? Are you using the, the IGTV also or just mainly shorts and reels? I feel like the attention span of people is very short. So you got to kind of get them right away. And I like the short skits better. And it's obviously, there's an education role in there. It's a lot of comedy. But what I'll do is in the caption section, I'll actually explain why I made this video, right? Like sometimes it's like, oh, cool, that's funny. But then at the bottom, there's like an education factor to it. It's like, oh, yeah, I made fun of this appraiser. But hey, look, you got to be real serious. Don't wave your appraisal, like, you know, because you never know, like, you know, you could be in big trouble or, or appraisers are right now slicing the appraisal price or the value of your place. So like, I, you need to educate them too. And that kind of helps them realize, okay, cool, this is a funny dude that I would like to hang out with. And, but then this guy's also kind of smart. Like he knows what he's talking about. But as far as converting followers and increasing your following base, there's a whole thing. I don't know if you wanted to touch on this later in the podcast or if I should jump right in now, but there's some tips and tricks that I've used that, that have really changed the game for me. Okay. Awesome. I did be, before that, I wanted to go <laughs> into hashtags. Um, okay, cool. And the reason I wanted to go into hashtags because I think there's a um, pool of thought now that I've seen lately where they're saying, don't put hashtags on any of your pictures because according to them, when you, when you put hashtags, it goes to a certain group. And if you don't push hashtags, then the platform will push it out to everybody. So their theory is that if you don't push any hashtags, you'll get more reach because the algorithm doesn't know who to push the content to. I don't know what you think about that. Well, I don't think that's accurate because then you're only going to be pushed out to your followers, right? Because they don't know where to push you, right? They might not push you at all, right? So I think hashtags are incredibly important because it allows you to like steer. I was going to say steer. Steer is a bad word in real estate, but it'll allow allow <laughs> Instagram to know where you want to be placed, right? So I think there's three tiers of hashtags that you need to have under your post, whether it's a photo, video, or anything, or even a reel. I think there's the national hashtags. 
there's the regional hashtags and then there's the hyper local hashtags that you need. So for example, the national hashtags for us would be like realtor, realtors, real estate, you know, realtors of Instagram, stuff like that, where there's a lot of people following those hashtags, right? Then you're going to have the regional ones. For me, New Jersey, uh, you know, would be NJ Realtors, Jersey City, Hoboken, Hudson County, blah, 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 right? That's the more, I would say it's like the regional. And then there's the hyper local, right? Like what are the hashtags in your target market that are doing well, right? So for me, it would be like Jersey City, Jersey City, New Jersey, it would be Jersey City Heights, it would be, you know, West Side, downtown Jersey City, blah, blah, blah. Those are the hyper local, right? So now they know exactly where to put you, right? Okay, you are a realtor, you want to be in the real estate side, but you also want to be in New Jersey, but you really want to hyper localize in Jersey City. So now you're being distributed how you want to be distributed. You're kind of telling them where you want to be. And the hashtags are incredibly important because you want direction, right? For realtors who are in an area, right? Like New Jersey, you know, Philly or whatever, right? Of Pennsylvania, like you need to be there, right? You need to be in people's posts or you want to be on their discover page for those regions. You don't want to be everywhere, right? right. So that's why hashtags are incredibly important. And also make sure you utilize the location uh, at the top. You could place the location of where you are. That's also super important. Always think about your target market when you're thinking of how to push these things out. Yeah. After explaining that, that definitely makes sense because if they're pushing it out to more people and they're not your target audience, they're not going to look at it anyway. Because what's the not point? Yeah, exactly. Then what's the point? They're not interested in it. So it's just like... Uh, and I also hold that on Instagram, you can oversaturate your hashtags because they're kind of moving away from putting a bunch of hashtags. Yeah. In You're allowed 30. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's I a think lot. That's but like I, mean, I, would, I mean, there's people that like do a few. Mm-hmm. I actually utilize like about 20 of them. About it 20. is a lot, but it allows me to be pushed in certain areas. But yes, you know, look, the algorithm is always changing. Everyone right. talks about the algorithm. Nobody right. knows what the hell that means, right? <laughs> Nobody knows what the algorithm is and what that means. You know, look, also a big part of social media is like testing things out, trying okay. things and seeing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. In the beginning, you got to, when you're testing things out, you got to do it a few times, right? Because the first time may not fly, right? It might just right. might not be good content, right? It might not mm-hmm. be content that, that landed. You've got to try a few things and if it doesn't work, then you tweak it and you try something else, right? Like, like, for example, we have our office page now, right? Um, I'm managing Howard Hanna Rand Realty in Jersey City. So we tried some comedy and comedy didn't necessarily work as well as like, you know, the more professional stuff. I thought like, all right, let's try it. Let's see if the comedy works here. And you know what? We realized that, hey, look, we need to be a little more professional on the business page, right? We need to, we're going to do interviews with the agents. It's going to be more knowledge based and it doesn't have to necessarily be more comedy. So you got to really test and see where you are. Like, I'm not telling everyone to be funny, right? right. Because some people just doesn't work with them. And, and maybe that's not what the people that are already following you like, right? So you have to be yourself, right? To me, that's comedy. And that's being an extrovert and being weird. Other people might not necessarily be that. It might be professional content, right? Like getting like professional photos done or professional videos done or, or just being yourself, right? Just going out there. Like what the day in the life of a realtor. Nobody really knows, you know, what we really do. So, you know, it depends. There's so many different types of content and ways to do it. I think one thing I want to point out with what you said, but didn't say is that you got to know your audience. You got to know your audience and you must study. Mm -hmm. You must study this subject because what I think a lot of people fall into the trap is social media is a leisure activity. But then when you switch it for a business, you should no longer take it as a leisure activity. You should treat it like a business. And if you don't, it won't treat you like a business. Exactly. Uh, You know, this goes for anything. You need to know your target market because you need to know who you're going to be marketing to. But you also need to know your audience, right? You need to know who your current audience is and who you want your audience to become. And, and these things are important in any facet, right? So I'm trying to get, you know, I'm getting more into like public speaking and, you know, stuff like this. To me, you always have to study your crowd. Like, who are you going to be talking to, right? You have right. to see, like for here, it's, you know, your social media heavy for real estate agents, right? So it's like, I know exactly what they're looking for, right? So, right. but everywhere you go, anytime you're at a speech, speaking engagement, anytime you're working with a, with a client, you got to, 
kind of know what you're walking into. And, and this goes into a whole different topic of like mirroring and all that stuff. And, you know, it was it how to win friends and influence people where it touches okay. upon stuff like that. But that's super important. Every facet of life is studying your target, right? So if you even, this goes even down to personal meetings face to face, it goes into social media, it goes into every facet of life. Now your the uh, social media part of your mm-hmm. business. Is it still just you or are you? outsourcing any of it, whether posting or editing or anything? It's all me. Look, I mean, editing, that's a, that's a skill that many people don't have. I kind of like learned it on my own. I use like iMovie. It's super easy. Um, and I also utilize TikToks. I think TikTok is, I use it more as a video editing tool, to be honest with you. I think it's mm-hmm. phenomenal. It's super easy to use. But some people might need to outsource some portion of it. But just like anything else in the real estate world, you're planting seeds in social media. This is not something you're going to start today and you're going to get clients tomorrow. It's right. just like real estate. You're going to make the calls. You're going to make the connections. And then eventually, things are going to start sprouting maybe a year later or two years later. right? So I've been doing this since 2017. And in 2020 is when I really went overdrive in it. And, and it's mm-hmm. taken me a couple of years, but now it's really blossomed into a whole different avenue of real estate leads. right? So. That's another thing. It's not a quick fix. It's not a quick lead generating source. Right. It's something that you have to grow. And I think people are used to, I mean, I think in this culture, it's kind of like they say the microwave culture. So it's like they want results yeah. today. Yeah. And like you said, social media is you're planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. And I think that's our, our industry in general. And that's what I yeah. tell a lot of new agents is that, look, you're really a farmer because you're not yeah. going to make anybody, you're not going to so sell true. a house per se. You can't make somebody buy a $400,000 piece of property. They got to have some motivation within them before meeting you. So yeah. it's your planting seeds, planting seeds. So when that time arises, okay, who am I thinking about? Because exactly. people usually go with a person that's in their mind space yeah. versus, oh, well, I told this person I was in real estate a year ago. They're probably not going to call you. Yep. It's so true. And that, that goes back to hitting them from every angle at all times, right? Utilizing different marketing techniques to get out to people. And also, yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct is that you have to water your plants, right? You got to water your leads from time to time. You got to reach out to them multiple times a year. These, you are not on their mind always, right? right? They're <laughs> the NAR, uh, National Association of Realtors. I think we have the most realtors licensed than any other period of time right now. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot of competition out there. And, you know, we got to just find ways to set ourselves apart from everyone else, right? There's so many people that are just like, oh, my sister's selling their house. You know, I'm going to get my license and make a quick buck. And then they're just like, that was easy. Now what? And then they get no sales. Like, you know, that's why most realtors fail in the first year. It just, it's not a quick buck always, right? It might be for that first transaction, but then what? Right, 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 right. Now, we have a lot of new realtors that come in, like you spoke about these new realtors that come into the business. What advice would you give them in reference to social media if they were just starting and they hadn't used social media before? Set your expectations for new realtors in general. Right now, I'm a manager. I'm kind of mentoring a lot of them uh, here now. Is Set your expectations for social media, for business, for everything, right? Don't come in here thinking you're going to make 100K in your first year. Maybe not even your second or third year, right? That's just a real estate game. You could be. I mean, you like, you know, I did more well above what the average realtor would make in their first year and my first year, right? But there's a way to do it, but also set your expectations. Like you got to put the time in, in every facet, including real estate and social media, right? You have to set time in, right? Like, so if, if you're not naturally doing, like, I just naturally love social media. So I'm on it. And doing it anyways, right? But if you're not the type of person that just like loves social media, you have to set time aside, put it in the calendar, like put like a little thing, like set a time aside two to three times a week, like 20 minutes, right? To engage and mm-hmm. post and be consistent with these things. And that's again, like, you know, I'm touching on social media, but this is every facet of becoming a successful real estate agent is. You have to be consistent and you have to put the time in, in every aspect, lead generating, you know, building your database, you know, posting regularly, right? So these, everything has to be consistent. 
and you have to set a time aside to do everything. That's that begs the question, how do you stop it from consuming you? Because what some agents mm -hmm. will do is they'll be on social media leisurely, yeah. but in their mind, they think they're working. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. It's right. incredibly important to kind of set some ground rules for yourself, right? right. So limit yourself. And I mean, look, I mean, our real estate world is like, this is really our office, right? right. So we're on here all the time. But you have to set time aside, let's just say in your calendar. And I would do this for everything, right? Like this is my like 10 to 12 or seven to 12 on Wednesdays and Thursdays. This is my this time, right? I have to do this and, and my phone is away. Set some blocks in a calendar. Like the way I work is like, if it's not my calendar, it's not happening. So I am really meticulous with my, my schedule. And there are times where you're going to have to put things aside and really block out times to do different aspects of your job. And you have to be really strict with yourself on it, right? Because right. look, we came from the corporate world. We, we, were, we come from an, an atmosphere and most realtors choose real estate as a secondary field. It's never very rarely met someone who's just like, I was born to be a realtor, right? Like, this, is, this is the one thing that I wanted to do from day one, right? It's never right. that way. We come from an industry, most people come from an industry where somebody was telling us what to do. Now, all of a sudden, all these new realtors, they find themselves in an industry where nobody's telling you what to do. Right. So you have to be really, uh, what's the word? Diligent. Focus. Focused. And, and you got to really, you're the boss now of yourself. And if you're right. not going to set yourself straight, nobody else will. Right. Right. That's total facts. Now, in your business, because you have marketing which is free, and you have advertising, which is paid for. Yeah. So on social media, are you all marketing or are you doing some advertising as far as any type of paid ads or? Yeah, well, yeah, I mentioned the, you know, like the mini billboards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I am big on guerrilla marketing. I try to. That's like, what I was thinking of. Yeah. That's what I wanted to get into. That It just, yeah. it lost my mind, but it's bad. Yeah. That's what I want you yeah. to get into as far as the guerrilla marketing piece. Look, the idea is we're all different, right? Analyze yourself and see how you are different from the next person, right? And this is tough for some people. It's like, like, how am I different, right? Like, make a swap of yourself, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? And, and analyze yourself. See, so for me, it's, it's very clear. I have a very visual difference <laughs> than most people. So for me, it was like, putting myself on stickers and stuff. So I, I started doing this during the pandemic is I would put my face on stickers. I would put my Instagram over here and then like inspirational quotes. So during the pandemic, it was, we will thrive again because people were stressing about the world. I was like, basically it was my message to be like, don't worry, we're going to be all right. And then now it's dream big and dare to do. It's kind of one of those things where like, look, now it's your time to shine. You need to really put the work in. So, I mean, I'm coming from a city. Not everyone's coming from a city. So there's right. stickers all over the place. So I'm like, I'm like tagging my city. But yeah, there is paid advertising. There's different ways to do it. It's not only about paying your advertising, but it's also determining how you're going to make yourself stand out from everyone else. Another thing is like my photo is not the standard photo, right? It's me sitting on steps. Mm. Right. Okay. Everyone's got that same photo. They're in a suit. Right. They got like that little box and they're just <laughs> like, me. yeah, <laughs> I, it, look, it works for some people. Like maybe right. again, though, you got to know your target market. Like maybe some people want that professional person. I wanted right. to be, you know, like I want to give up the vibe that, Hey, look, I'm, I'm a relaxed guy and I'm going to make sure this process is not so stressful for you. So that was, that's just my personality. Right. Some people like they want that top producer, like definition, like the, classic definition of a top producer and that's what they put out there and that's that's why you need to analyze yourself is like analyze yourself and analyze your target like who is going to like you and then you got to study that and work that yeah so i pay for i pay for random stuff like stickers like today i i put an order in for uh coasters right so i have my face on the coasters and i'm just going to give them out to bars in the area right okay with my Instagram and stuff. So you've got to think outside of the box. There's so many different ways. Do some research and then really don't be afraid to take a risk. Honestly, mm -hmm. again, like I said, with our social media pages, we, we test things out. Something works, something doesn't. At least you're doing something, right? right? Do it though. 
That's a thing. You've got to do it. Like, get out of your head. Right. One thing that That's I cool. want to go back, yeah, get out of your own head. Like, and one thing that I want to go back to is that a lot of realtors are worried about posting their face. I kind of touched upon this before. Everyone knows what you look like. People see you more than you see yourself. So it's like, there's no surprise <laughs> there. Like, everyone knows what you sound like. They know what you look like. And they see you way more than than you see yourself so you need right. to like chill out nobody cares right. and that's what people got like yeah even me though i hate to hear my voice right like if i'm on video yeah i'm probably not going to want to watch this again because <laughs> i don't want to hear myself <laughs> but but you know what like you know people we're just human beings and we have differences and what you need to know about your differences is that if it's something you could change and you wanted to change then do it change it but if it's right, something that you change. can't change get over it like own it a quote that I got from, or not a quote, but like something I learned, like Game of Thrones. Great, great show. I loved it. We had Peter Dinglish, I think was his name, is, is one of the characters. I forgot his name. Tywin Lannister, maybe? In the show, he goes, you have to take your weakness and make a strength out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So my weakness, I hate to say it, growing up, I was bullied. I was beat up. I was put down for the way that I look. And you know what? I made it my, my strength. Because it was who I am now. It's different. And it doesn't have to be just for minorities. There's people out there with, that, that have differences. And you just got to get over it and own it. And if you don't own it, then you're the reason. Right. Because you're not a tree. If you don't like what's happening, move. Yeah. You're not a tree. You're just not stuck in one no. place. But I think you touched on a, a very good point as far as people just being inside their own head. And I never thought about that, that other people see you a lot more than you yeah. see yourself. And yeah. um, I think that's an awesome thing to touch on because we deal with that with people just in general, whether they're inside real estate or outside real estate, just being self-conscious and they're their own worst enemy, as they so say, true. because so true. You're, you're worried about things that aren't even here yet, or you're worried about other people's opinion. And mm. I do see a lot of realtors, they don't want to get on social media and they don't want to. They don't want to show their face, but people buy from other people. Yeah. They're with you because you're a person that has a personality. Like, and you're not showing it. Is That's your problem then. Oh, no. I was going to say that if, if you even look at your own buying habits, you want to buy from somebody else that you vibe with, somebody that you connected to yes. versus just buying a product. Yeah. And they won't know that they're vibing with you if you don't show yourself. Right. They right. won't know that they can buy with you. And then another thing is, if you ask me, and if you ask me who your biggest enemy was, mm-hmm. or, or anybody asked me that, I would say, look in the mirror. Nobody else gives a shit. Oh, excuse me. I don't know if I'm on <laughs> But nobody else. Nobody PG else, program. PG program. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> nobody else cares, right? Like, nobody's sitting there like, what is Javier doing today, right? It's you're setting the limitations upon yourself. And, and Bruce Lee, there's a really awesome story about one of his friends went running with him and, and he was like, how do you do it? Like, you know, he's like, no, we're going to run 30 miles today or something like that. And the guy's like, are you crazy? And then he's like, I'll do it again tomorrow. And it was, it was one of those things where he's like, look, like, you're the only one setting limitations on yourself. Mm, mm. There's nobody else. Like if you say it's not possible, it is absolutely not possible. There is nothing can be done if your head doesn't go there. So if you don't believe it to be done, you've already sold, sold yourself short. Right. I have, um, I don't know if you have children, but I tell my children that all the time. It's like, listen, whether you can do it or not, it's your choice. If you say that you can do it, you're probably right. If you say you can't do it, you're probably right. Yep. But it all starts with your choice, man. So. Listen, man, to wrap this up, all the realtors that watch this program, I want them to be able to take a nugget or a hack, a social media hack or some to do, man. What's one thing that you can give the realtors out there listening a how to do or a hack on one of these social media platforms? All right. So this is, this is where the money is made. This is how I find people that I didn't know before on social media. So when you're on Instagram, you go to discover, you know, the little search bar at the bottom, and then you go to the top and, you know, you're on that screen right there where you can kind of search for something. So go to your target market. So I'm going to put Jersey City, right? And okay, search. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Do it with me. And then put All your right. target market. So what is your main city uh, of business or what is your, what do you want to be your target market? So you go search 
you search for your location, right? Where do you want your business to come from? Then it mm -hmm. says, once you've searched, it'll say top accounts, audio tags, and places. Right? You'll see there, right? So you're going to go to places. places then it'll okay. show every place that's kind of associated with the word that you put in the Jersey City, downtown Jersey City, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to click Jersey City for simplicity's sake. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to see all the posts that people tag in Jersey City, right? right. There's top and recent. I would go to recent. Okay. And once you're in recent, you're going to see all the recent posts. I'm looking before it to make sure nothing you know, inappropriate <laughs> is there. But you're okay. going to see all the posts that people put where they tag Jersey City okay. in the post. I'm in Jersey City. I want to meet more people in Jersey City. So I will go through these posts. I will like as many of the posts that I, I can. I will comment on posts. I will engage with people that I don't know. And then people are going to be like, who is this guy who's liking my photos? I don't know who this is. They're going to go to my page and, you know, a few people out of a hundred will follow me. And then, you know, what happens from there, it becomes something where then we're interacting on each other's stories and then we become friends. Like I have created so many friends in Jersey City by doing this. And, and again, it's not like, it's not like I'm doing this to get followers. I'm doing this to make money. It's I'm doing this because I want to meet people. I'm an extrovert and I want to, you know, improve myself. I want to improve my business. I want to improve my life. I want to make friends. So I do this and you're engaging with people in your target market. Now you could do this with hashtags too, because you do the Jersey City. It's not only places. You could go back and it'll say tags. And so then you go to tags and do the same thing. You know, and again, search the hashtags, right? Downtown Jersey City is one. So I could go to downtown Jersey City or I could go to places or the tag. Go through there and be selective on whose photos you like. You know, you should be careful about what you're liking out there. Right. But, uh, <laughs> and that's how my, it, but you've got to do this consistently. Right? You can't right. just do it once. Like I'm like, when I'm doing this, it's like 30 minutes straight. I'm just sitting there doing this and I'm doing this every other day at least. Usually it's like, you know, in the evening after work where I'm just kind of chilling. I'll just go through and I start liking and, and commenting on people's stuff. And that is, is how, you get people that don't know you to follow you on Instagram. Wow. I mean, I've been doing a bunch of episodes with some heavy hitters, but that's probably one of the best, if not the best recommendations that I've had so far. Because when you said that, it makes a lot of sense. And I know that you're doing it personally, mm -hmm. but what you can also do, because I have two VAs, you can have a virtual assistant do it also. Yeah. Easily, easily. But you just got to give them the guidelines on what to like and what not to like, right? Like, I will never like a kid's post because I think that's inappropriate. Yeah. Or like, you know, if there's, you know, some people post racy stuff, right? So I'm like, right. I don't like those right. things. Right. So right. like you could, as long as you said, but that is something that you could pay someone to do, but you just got to be careful. Like don't overdo it either. Cause then Instagram is going to block you. Right. Like they'll, right. they'll ban you on uh, from doing it. So like, like hundred to 200 days is very possible. And then you can do the replies. But have them yeah. just do it, just start yeah. the actual conversation. But yeah. then you have them do the, re or you can do the replies yourself mm -hmm. and then continue the conversation, man. Wow. Just that be was, authentic. Make sure right. that's the only thing when you're doing virtual assistance, it's kind of hard to be authentic because that's not you, right? So just be careful with that. I mean, maybe they could do the liking, but maybe when you're engaging on posts, you could do that. And then like when someone follows you, go on their page and start commenting on their stuff and, and, you know, do the follow for follow if you feel comfortable. Some people may not for certain accounts, but engage with them then. Like make it a point, like this person followed me. Now I got to like, let me go see what they're about. Let me learn about them. Make a friend. Yep. Make a friend, make an Instagram friend, man. Well, Javier, man, this has been definitely beneficial for myself first and foremost, but for the listeners out there, man, Javier, you can get all of his information in the description, um, he is licensed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but New Jersey and New York? Yeah, uh, I'm licensed in both, but I primarily do almost all my business in North Jersey, focus on Hudson County, but I do go outside for listings. Okay. And so if any of you have referrals, definitely reach out to him. If you don't know about Jersey, man, Jersey is not big in size, but they have many different sections because i'm yeah. licensed in jersey too but i'm not going to north jersey they have like yeah. five mls's and <laughs> yeah. I'm, part of, I'm part of three <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they got a lot going on in jersey so even if you're licensed in jersey as myself you want to get somebody that specializes in that area so definitely if you have a jersey city or just uh, northern jersey in general 
just reach out to my man and he will definitely take care of you, man. So real estate thing on Instagram. That's yep, real see, estate S N G H. There we go. So if y'all can't see, if you're catching this on the podcast, everybody who catches this on YouTube, you'll be able to see his hashtag. But if you catch this on uh any other other platforms where you don't see the video, then as he said, you can catch him at at real estate sing S I N G H, man. Cool. All right. All right, guys. Well, again, thanks. Um, thanks for viewing. Until the next time, man.